Hey guys, it's Spacey Sims, and we are back with more Mystic Destinies, and I sound so happy because Takumi's out! <laughs> so, literally, I recorded the last part, um, uh, the bad path of Shinji's route, which you guys saw, obviously, two days ago, and... I recorded it, and I was like, I don't know when his route's coming out, guys. I don't know what we're going to do. And I was like, if it doesn't come out soon, then, you know, because I'm trying to record ahead so that when it comes time, Christmas time and the holidays, that I don't have to leave you guys with nothing. So I'm trying to, right now, it's the end. It's not even December yet. And I am trying to record weeks and weeks and weeks in advance because I know what's going to happen is we're going to get closer and there's going to be points where... Okay, I'm not going to be able to record as much because I'm going to be away or if I see family or whatever. You know, I'm just, I'm preparing for this. So I'm trying to record everything in bulk. So I'm usually like a week or two out. I'm trying to get like everything recorded through the beginning of January between right now. It's November 30th. Okay, so this is like, I'm recording this way in advance. I, so I'm trying to record everything for the next month, like, or more, you know? Um, so I wasn't really sure when this was coming out and lo and behold, the next day I'm scrolling through Twitter and I see the studio posting and it was actually a post from Monday that said, Oh, Takumi's route's out tomorrow, the 29th. And I was like, wait, that's today. It came out. I, I was so mad because I came home on Tuesday and I was going to record it. I look and it wasn't out yet. So I guess it just depends on the release, probably releasing California time or something. I don't know, whatever. But it finally released later that night. And I was like, all right, I bought it right away. Um, and it came out in perfect time because the autumn sale ended on the 29th and I got it on the autumn sale price. So I'm super excited that I checked and saw it, um, was available. I mean, it was like $3.99 instead of what, $4.99. So I saved like a dollar, but still, you know, saved a dollar. Um, but yeah, so I bought it right away and I'm so freaking excited that we are back. So we're going to be back on our normal path, um, of every other day. Which I'm sure you noticed because we had a new game that posted yesterday. So, um, I guess you kind of figured maybe what was going on. Or if you saw my post on Twitter, like, what, like a week ago? No, well, literally, for me, right now, it was like two days ago. But, actually, it was yesterday. Kind of. Time is going really slow. But, anyway, so we're here, finally, with Takumi's Route. And I am so excited. So excited. Oh my god. Okay. Honestly, I could have played this because the first three chapters were already... They, like, had the first three chapters, so we could have played the first three chapters of his route. But I didn't want to, like, record those and then, oh, his path doesn't come out for another week or so and then not have... You know, so, I don't know. Anyway. Takumi. Yeah, so the free-spirited Takumi comes from a human family that cautions him against getting involved with the, mag oh, the mystical world that he finds so fascinating. Though Takumi respects his family's reasons, he has no intention of cutting ties with the supernatural world. Instead, he leads a secret nightlife only those closest to him know about. He's 19, his birthday is June 2nd, he's 5'10", his major is criminal justice, he likes superheroes and swimming. Random. He dislikes rules and sweets. He dislikes sweets. What's wrong with you? I was born to investigate. Takumi is said to have extremely bizarre tastes in food and style. And the unseen to unlock his un hidden side. You have to read through the story. Actually, did we actually read? Oh, you know what? We didn't actually read uh, Conflicts and Tofu. We didn't read Shinji's uh, hidden after we finished his path. So let's read that. The Fae, Fair Folk, Fairies, or Elves. These are just some of the many different titles these elusive beings are called. They are masters of the elements and magic, the original mages. They are the ones who brought magic into the bloodlines of humans. The Fae are, the one, are one of the many inhabitants of Avalon, otherwise, though, although falsely known as the Fairy Realm. The Fae are known for their incredible beauty as well as uh, the danger that beauty hides. Many stories are heard about the dangerous nature of the Fae, but none comes close to the truth. Ooh. Anyway. So, boop, boop, boop. We're going to go back. Sorry. We just, we never do that at the end. And I know we've read the other guys, but... We'll probably, I'm going to try to remember and we'll go through like when we do the epilogue for each one at the end of the playing through all the paths, we'll try to go through and like read all this again. So, so let's read story. 14 chapters. Ah! That's 14 parts.
Hold on. Oh my god! And then the ending, that'll be like, the ending will be part 70. Mystic Destiny's part 70. In the middle of January. Oh my god. And I'm really kind of sad. I, we're going to record all of... I'm going to have to record all of Takumi's path. Like, all of it. Pretty much. Except for, like, the last couple of... Oh my god, that's going to be devastating. Anyway, chapter one, Twilight Falls. Five minutes of babbling about nothing. I'm just so excited. I, I can't choose. How can you expect me to just make a decision like that? I need time to process all this. I gesture to everything and everyone around me. I'm sorry, Inara, but I can't do that. You're almost literally a ticking time bomb. If I let you go like this, you'll be risking other people's lives. And I can't let you do that. Please, just choose. Seeing the firm look on Hikaru's face, I take a step back. I feel cornered, and suddenly, the large basement feels all too small. I glance toward the elevator in desperation. But Hikaru's eyes follow my gaze. Inara, I need you to calm down a little. Like I said before, any of these guys know enough to teach you. They won't harm you. We just want to make sure you and everyone else is safe. Hikara takes a step towards me, and I take another one back. For some reason, my heart is pounding, and I feel short of breath. I just need some time. Please! I shut my eyes just for a few minutes, wishing that all of this would just... go away. I feel my body burning up again, and I open my eyes to see nothing but light again. Oh god, not again! I have the strangest feeling this time, though. I feel tingles all over my entire body like it's fallen asleep. It feels like I can feel every cell in my body. Yet my consciousness feels like it's moving far away from my body. I feel like part of me is standing back against, back against the wall. But another part of me is starting to get the sensation of falling? What the hell is happening? I feel air rushing around me. I snap open my eyes wide. I see the evening sky and the city spread out before me. I am so stunned and confused that at first, I don't react. But then the fear kicks in when I look down and see the university sidewalk beneath me. I start screaming. Someone in yellow below me looks up. I can see their mouth become a perfect O. They spread their arms in an awkward position, half to catch me, half to protect themselves. That's the last thing I see before impact. Wait, what just happened? Did she fall off a building? Ugh! Ugh! In movies, sometimes they talk about someone cushioning another's landing, but the word cushion is the furthest word away from my mind when I think of how to describe this. Hitting him felt like slamming into a rock, and now we're sprawled out on the ground. Ow, ow, ow! Damn it! That hurts! I slowly push myself up and realize I'm pushing into the chest of someone. Someone I know. T Takumi? Oh my god, I am so sorry! Takumi lifts his head, looking at me and gritting his teeth. I notice tears in his eyes. C could you p please move your knee? I glance toward my knee and realize it's right in his crotch. <laughs> that is a beautiful way to stir your relationship. You totally just need the poor bastard. Oh my god. I roll off Takumi and look at him, desperately apologetic. I am so sorry, Takumi. I didn't. I. I, I sputter, trying to get the words out. Takumi just lies his head back against the concrete and lifts up one finger. I just seriously need a few minutes, please? Uh, oh, uh, yeah, right. Okay, sorry. I stand up and check myself for injuries. My pants are a little torn and scraped up, and I feel bruised in some places. But I don't seem to have any broken bones, thanks to Takumi. Takumi slowly gets up, seeming to lack all the energy I'd seen from him in the past. Man, I'm sorry, Takumi. Takumi checks himself for injuries, but he doesn't appear to have any, which is impressive in itself. I guess rolling like that helps spread out the force. And then a thought occurs to me. Did he somehow do that on purpose? He looks up and our eyes meet. How do I even explain? Did you just... Did you just fall from the sky? Um, yeah, I think so? There's a brief silence, and then he says something completely unexpected. Is this the part where I ask if you're a fallen angel or something? Don't you mean that I fell from heaven? I'm pretty sure a fallen angel would be considered a devil. Takumi laughs, and it's an unexpectedly refreshing sound. It makes me relax a little, and I give him a small smile. Oh! 
He bends down and picks something up. These are your glasses, right? Oh, yeah. Thanks. I slide them back onto my face. Takumi stares at me as I do, and it makes me a little self-conscious. Um, so, do you want to tell me what happened just now? Oh, since it's late, maybe like over a drink or dinner or something. Is he asking me out? Yes, he is, because he's in love with you. And he's so cute, I love Takumi, I'm so excited about him. <sighs> he's just been in love with you and all the other paths, so I'm finally so, I'm excited that we get here, and like... <sighs> Plus, I'm really curious about him because I feel like in all the other paths, they've been kind of like hinting at little things and he comes up and like, first he's just your kind of your friend and then he's like a ninja and now he's like this. He wasn't really much in Shinji's path, but he's like a fucking ninja. So it's like, cool. I become flustered and try to think of a response, but then he runs a hand through his hair and sighs. Never mind. What am I thinking? You look like you're barely standing. Uh, how about I take you home instead? I hesitate. I left my bag in the other room, but it's not like I could go get it. I suddenly get scared that the others are out looking for me. I hurry and nod to Takumi. Sure, I'd appreciate it. Um, but do you mind if we hurry? I want to get home quick. Takumi seems to be examining me, but he says nothing. Sure, come on, let's go. I'm in the parking garage. A student having a car in the city? It's kind of strange. He must be super rich. We will huck along at a good clip until we reach the parking garage. Oh, wait here a sec. Takumi runs off before I can say a word. A few minutes later, I hear a motor and see Takumi approaching on a white scooter. I can't help but smile. Uh, okay, that makes much more sense. Takumi pouts a little at me. Are you laughing at my scooter? What? No, not really. I mean, I just thought you had a car. A car would just be a hassle. You can't get into small spaces with a car. I bought this with my money this year, and we've already been through a lot together. I get the feeling this is going to be one of those speeches about how much a man loves his car. Or scooter. Sometimes a woman loves her car too, alright? Let's just... I could have twisted. I decide to cut that off quick. It's fine, I'm sorry. Scooters do make a lot more sense, and they're way cheaper. More environmentally friendly too. I gingerly get on behind Takumi. I did not sign up for this. At least I'm wearing pants today. Take my helmet. I've only got one, so... Are you sure? I'd feel really bad if something happened to you. It's more likely to happen to you if you're inexperienced. I guiltily take the helmet from him and put it on. All right, you better hold on tight. Don't be shy. I place my arms a little higher and try to keep a reasonable distance. I do my best to make sure nothing in particular is pressing up against his back. Most of our ride is uneventful, and I think that Takumi is being considerate of me. I can't imagine what he thinks about what happened earlier. When we get to my apartment building, he slows to a stop. I get off and hand the helmet to him. You did well. You've ridden one before, haven't you? Or at least on the back of one. I, yeah, a little. Takumi stares at me, and I have to wonder what he's thinking. I could swear he looks a little pouty again, but I can't imagine why. Well, you're the first girl that got to ride with me, so... He gives me a thumbs up. Congratulations! He gives a little laugh, and I feel myself getting red again. But then he gets serious. Hey, you're from the other world, aren't you? Huh? Other world? Takumi stares hard at me again and then pulls out his phone. Somehow, you're new to all this, right? Don't worry, I know about that world too. So if you ever want to tell me what happened, or need some help... He types something onto his phone and then shows me. It's his name, number, and email in an unsent text message. I'll send this to you if you type in your number. He holds out the phone and I take it. I look at Takumi and then at the phone. I start typing in my number and I hit send on the text myself. So just remember, I can help if you want. Just let me know. He puts on his helmet and waves at me. All I can do is watch as he speeds off into the sunset. The moment I step inside my apartment, it felt like all of the events of the day caught up to me. I nearly collapsed then and there, but somehow managed to drag myself into bed. I'm curious how she got from the basement to falling off the roof. You know what I mean? Like, how the hell that happened, but... My whole body feels heavy, too heavy to move, so I don't even try to change into something else. I flop onto the bed with a deep sigh. I lay on my back with my eyes on one particular spot on the ceiling. No matter how much time ticks away with me laying still like this, my heart doesn't stop frantically beating away against my ribs. Even though I try not to think of anything, my mind floods with images of earlier today. The memory of feeling trapped and the way that Professor Kazama looked at me? I shiver at the still very fresh image of his cold aqua eyes. 
didn't seem like he was going to let me go at all. And I don't know what happens to people who don't cooperate. To people who just run off like that, even if it wasn't intended. What if... What if they do something to me? My stomach twists at the thought. I don't want to find out. I don't want to know enough about magic. Oh, I don't know enough about magic. I don't know enough about their world to even guess what they might do to me. They weren't going to leave me a choice. The professor was insistent that I choose. All I wanted was to think about it for a little. Part of me wants to lay in bed for eternity. If I don't ever move, then everything should be fine. If I can't die, then lying here forever shouldn't be a problem. If I pretend I don't exist, then it's all fine. Just thinking that, I know it's a lie. I would never be fine. None of this would ever be fine. I can't go back to Hagawara. I have no doubt that they're pissed off at me for disappearing like that. They'll try to force me to choose again. But I really don't know. And if they force me into something like that, what else will I be forced into? Isn't it enough that that woman forced me into this situation in the first place? I sigh and close my eyes. Being angry about it feels so exhausting and pointless. Can I... Uh, can I ever go back to being normal? I mumble the question to the empty room. How I wish there were someone who would tell me that everything could be fixed with a simple flick of some magic wand. Swish and flick. I sigh. I can't go back there. At least not yet. I need some time to think things through. I need to, th I need to think about so much. Like, if I'm at all human or what. Once I've figured out what to do, I can go back. I'll have to drop out of school in the meantime. I can't tell anyone about this. Definitely not my family. What would I say anyway? Oh, sorry, Dad, I'm dropping out because magic is real and... and what? I turn over to my side. Why did you do this to me? Why did you just leave me like that? She messed up everything. Didn't even ask or explain. Threw me right into the deep end. Thanks so much, Mother. Really loving all this right now. I take deep breaths and try to calm the swirling mass of negative energy and anger. It's hard to chase away the image of her from my mind. My vision starts to blur as the world around me starts to spin. Deep breaths. Deep breaths. My head feels light. A strange burning sensation builds in my chest. I can barely breathe. My ears ring so loud that I can barely hear myself think. I want to claw at my chest to stop the burning. Something shifts inside me and my whole body starts to tingle. No, 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 no! Not again, please, not again! I force myself to sit up. The lights flicker as I move. Hot and cold. I can't stop shivering. Gasping for breath, I push myself up, stumbling as I take a step forward. I lean against the wall to hold myself up. Everything around me seems to shake as I move through the room. I... Even speaking feels like a struggle. I hear something shatter behind me. I need to stop this. I fumble around in my pockets with a single thought in mind. I need help. I can hear something fall and break out in the living room. I rest my back against the wall. With, uh, with shaky fingers, I call the only person who I can think of to help me. Tears drip onto my smartphone screen. I don't know what I'm feeling anymore. All my emotions are so tangled together that I can't tell sadness from anger, joy from pain. I need to reach out to Takumi. He's the only one who might be able to help without tying me down. I press call and quietly listen to the endless ringing on the other end of the line. It keeps on ringing. Once. Twice. He's not picking up. Pick up, come on, pick up. It rings and rings, but there's no answer. The call ends before it can even begin. I stare down at my phone. My hand shakes so much that I can barely hold on to it. What do I do now? I close my eyes and focus on my breathing. In and out. In and out. The massive miasma of emotion weighs, me, weighs down on me. I can barely breathe. My heart feels as if someone set it aflame. How do I... Ugh. I can't take this. I need to think about something else. Anything else. My thoughts turn to my little sister and I desperately cling to the image of her happy smile in my mind. Kayo. Kayo, I wonder how she's doing. She... Ugh! I, I wonder how school is for her? Memories of the last time that we got to spend together as a family brings forth an image I wanted to avoid. Those green eyes staring down at me, so vivid and bright, yet so completely cold and void of emotion. A similar sort of coldness behind Professor Kazama's eyes, ones that told me I wasn't getting a choice in my own fate. 
A sharp pain pierces through my heart at the thing I had been trying not to think about. I don't have a choice in any of this. No one gave me one. I feel what little control I had over myself begin to slip from my grasp. I have no idea what might happen when I do lose control. If I'll just blow up again like in the classroom. But I know that I can't stay here. I need to get somewhere where there's little chance of me hurting someone else. I force my body to move against all protest. I need to get outside. Now. I barely make it down the stairs before my legs give out. I drop to my knees and tumble sideways, painfully hitting the ground with a thump. Ugh. My whole body refuses to respond. I try to stand up, but it's as if I'm trapped within myself. And yet, the strange feeling inside me, the feeling of something rapidly uncoiling and going out of control, continues. I try to ga uh, grasp onto the feeling within me, fighting, pulling it back inside. But for all my effort, I might as well be trying to catch water between my hands. Whatever it is, it's quickly slipping, slipping out from my grasp. The world around me seems to shift and blur. I lie completely motionless, but at the same time, it feels like I'm floating somewhere. Nowhere. My vision fades. The only thing I see is faint outlines of my surroundings. Darkness takes over everything. The world goes quiet. I can't hear a single thing. I... I feel my consciousness begin, being smothered, bit by tiny bit. No, I don't... Something, or maybe someone claws at me. I don't want this. Pushed and pulled, all I want to do is open my eyes. Stop! I stare up at the night sky. I'm awake? I can't move. I barely gather my thoughts before I can feel the haze come to devour me again. I'm floating. Somewhere. Nowhere. Am I disappearing? feels like I am. Slowly, yet so rapidly at the same time. Isn't that a contradiction? I just want to... To what? What do I want? To stop. To be me. I want to come back to myself. I want to go back. To be the me that I was before this. Before everything. Before she changed me. Please, just let me be me. I, re I open my eyes to see someone in a pair of heavy black boots move toward me. The footsteps look heavy, but they make no sound. Instead, it seems, my heart beats away like a drum, to fill in the silence left behind by the footsteps. I can only watch as the person gets closer to me. No, oh, no, no, please. I don't need any more trouble. It's Takumi, come on. With me laying completely helpless on the ground as my powers slowly go completely out of my control. I can't even speak. I can't warn anyone to stay away from the ticking time bomb that is me. There's no telling what might happen to any poor soul that got close enough to me. The boots stop right before my eyes, close enough that I can see the dirt on them. Before I can so much as scream in my head, a familiar face pops down into my view. Hey. Takumi? His name on my lips feels so sweet somehow. My voice sounds so strained and strange that I barely recognize myself. Takumi gently rolls me from my side onto my back and kneels down next to me. Just saying his name left me completely exhausted. I stare at him, desperately hoping that he might somehow understand me through my eyes. Please, Takumi, I don't know what to do. He carefully examines me and sighs. It's okay. You're okay. I'm here now. Everything will be okay. Takumi's voice is so gentle, so soothing that a part of me wants to just give in and relax. I want to. Another part of me refuses to give in, fearing the loss of the tiny grip of control that I managed to grab. But what if... I don't want to hurt anyone. Perhaps sensing my reluctance, Takumi slowly reaches out and strokes my hair with a smile. Despite his calm words and gentle touch, my heart jumps, fighting back, refusing to give in to serenity. It'll be okay, Inara. I'm gonna do something that'll make you calm down. You might feel a little pain. Is that okay? I nod, somehow pulling myself together long enough to give an answer. Inner turmoil be damned. Above all, I get the feeling that I can trust in Takumi. Keep calm and trust Takumi. Just like, keep calm and trust Yukio. <laughs> I need shirts made! Takumi comes closer to me and carefully pulls me up onto his knees in his arms. Resting against him like this, I can almost hear his heartbeat. I feel a sudden pinch in my wrist pain comes and goes so fast that I barely register it. All the tension slowly trickles away. The world starts to feel a little fuzzy, but I don't want to let go just yet. 
My breathing is heavy, but it no longer feels like a struggle. Whatever it is Takumi did to me, I start to regain control of my body, even with my consciousness slowly slipping away. I look up at Takumi as he lies me back down on the ground. With his face so close to me, and no impending doom looming over me, I take in every detail of his face. The feeling of familiarity comes rushing back to me, but I can't quite put my finger on it. I almost write it off as me only feeling that way towards him because we already met a few times. Because he helped me when I fell out of the sky. But it's different somehow. Why do I trust him so easily? Why do I feel like I know him? Takumi moves to stand up, and my body reacts on its own, grabbing onto his jacket sleeve. I want to say it, but the words don't come out. Don't leave me. Don't worry, I'm not going anywhere. He quickly kneels down again with his back facing me this time. Takumi pulls my arm over his shoulder and my legs around his waist. With what little strength I have left in me, I manage to hold on to him. He's giving her... Everybody else, like, picks her up all bridal style. And he's like, piggyback ride. Fucking Takumi. I kind of like that. It's, like, awkwardly charming. He easily carries me back up the stairs. While Takumi carries me like this, I get a strange thought. Being carried like this. The view from this sort of angle. The white hair. It all feels so familiar and yet different at the same time. Takumi lies me down on my bed that feels so much more comfortable than the cold, hard ground outside. I look up at his cute, worried face. Even though I'm exhausted, I can't stop my smile when I look at him. Taku? What? Have we met before? So you finally remembered. Takumi sits down on the very edge of the bed. I can't believe it. You really remembered? Yeah. You're the little shrimp of a kid I grew up with. I stifle a yawn. I'm not much of a shrimp anymore, though. No, you're really not. Still, I remember how you used to try and carry me piggyback sometimes when I got too tired. Mother got so mad. Mother. The woman I would like more than anything to forget, but cannot. Even if I don't want to admit it, her shadow might haunt me forever. My mom always acted angry, but I think she was really proud of me for taking care of you. There would always be this little smile on her face, even though she tried to hide it. I yawn and smile. My eyes are starting to feel so heavy. Her mom was so cool. I'd like to see her sometime. But why do you look so different now? <laughs> you grew up? Your eyes. Exhaustion hits me like a ton of bricks as I'm reaching out to touch his face. My hand falls, hitting the bed with a tiny bounce. The last thing I see before my consciousness fades away is Takumi's violet eyes. Oh my god! Can I just tell you? I I don't even care that they postponed this a couple of times, because this is worth it. I know it was only the first chapter, but I just... As much as I love the other guys, this, I feel like... I don't know why, but just reading this is like the best first chapter. And it's not just because so much happened. I just feel like the writing, even though, I mean, it's still the same structure. Like, it's very, it's, it's not, like, super complex or anything. They keep it relatively straightforward and simple sentences because you're, like, clicking through reading it, like, to keep it interactive like that. But it just, I don't know what it is. There's just something about this that just feels so much muchier, I don't know, than the other ones. And I'm not complaining about the other ones because you know how much I love the other boys. I do. But I just, I don't know, like, I feel like the heart is in, is in Takumi. It's like, hey, we like Sho, and we like Tetsuya, and we like Shinji, but we love Takumi. I just feel like the love is all for Takumi. And I mean, especially because if you think about it, like, he's kind of been in love with her in all the other routes, or he's always, like, friendly with her and, like, goofs around, or, like, yeah, he only told us in Tetsuya's route, but he kind of is always flirty with her a little when you see him. So, I feel like this is, like, I don't know. Do you know what I'm saying? Like, hey, we're going to write all these different paths, but I almost feel like, even though there's different writers for most of them, I think two of them have the same writer, and I don't know if the lead writer for Takumi did any other ones, but, but you know what I mean? I almost feel like it's, like, this is, this is, this is who we really, this is who she's supposed to be with. Like, yeah, we have these four other guys you can choose from, but Takumi is, like, the ace. You know what I mean? Like, 
you know, like he's, he's the one just like in amnesia memories. It's like, yeah, there's all those other guys and that's all great. But like Yukio was the knot that ties it all together because he's the one that know that that's where you really get all the secrets coming out. And I feel like this is like, yeah, sure. We've got Hikaru at the end, but like, this is, this is Takumi's like the knot and everybody else is just, you know, I, I don't know. It's just the feeling I get, but maybe it's just because I feel like, because they took so long and they keep revamping it, or just even this first chapter, I just feel like there's something more in Takumi already. I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. But anyway, I'm going to wrap this part up here, and when we come back in the next part, we'll read chapter two. But yeah. So I will see you guys next time. Remember to give the video a big thumbs up and subscribe to see more.